For our first server component pattern, let's talk about the separation of server-only code. When building Next.js applications, certain code is intended to execute only on the server. For instance, you might have modules or functions that use multiple libraries, use environment variables, interact directly with the database, or process confidential information. Since JavaScript modules can be shared between both server and client components, it's possible for code that's meant only for the server to unintentionally end up in the client. If server-side code gets bundled into the client-side JavaScript, it could lead to a bloated bundle size, expose secret keys, database queries, and sensitive business logic. It is crucial to separate server-only code from client-side code to protect the application's security and integrity. To prevent unintended client-side usage of server code, we can use a package called server-only to provide a build time error if developers accidentally import one of these modules into a client component. Let's dive into VS Code and understand with an example. Let's begin by creating a server and client component. In the app folder, create server route slash page dot tsx. Define a simple React component using pieces extension. Pieces Explorer. TypeScript, insert a Next.js page component. Next, in the same app folder, create another file, client route slash page dot tsx, and insert another React component using pieces. For the server component, let's call this server route page. And for the client component, client route page. And at the top, add the use client directive. Since we will be creating plenty of client components in the future, let's convert this into a pieces snippet for future use. Pieces, save to pieces. Next, in the source folder, Create a new folder named utils with a file serverutils.ts. Here, let's define a function intended solely for server side use. Our focus here is on the concept of server only code, not the function's implementation details. Therefore, we will create a function with a simple log statement and return a string value. This function might depend on various NPM packages or custom utilities designed for server-side logic, use environment variables for API keys that shouldn't be exposed to the client side, make calls to a database to retrieve data, or process business logic, algorithms, or calculations that should remain on the server side. We return the result. Now let's import and invoke this function in a server component which is our page.tsx file in the server route folder. So within the component, const result is equal to server side function with parentheses and make sure to import server side function from utils slash server utils. For the JSX, let's bind result to a paragraph tag. Let's also add a log statement server route rendered. Back in the browser, if we navigate to localhost 3000 slash server route, we don't see the log message in the browser, but we do see it in the terminal because the page component is a server component. I hope this is clear. Next, let's include the function in our client-only route. And this is a client component. So const result is equal to, we call server-side function, bind result to a paragraph, and of course, import the function at the top. I'll also add a log message, client route rendered, similar to the message we had for server route. 
back in the browser, if we navigate to slash client route, we see the log messages in the console. We do see them twice because of React's strict mode, which we can safely ignore as the built application would output only once. In the terminal, we also see the same log statements as every client component is also rendered once on the server to generate the initial HTML. However, given the nature of the operations in server-side function, it's crucial to ensure that this code executes only on the server. If this code were included in the client-side bundle, it could lead to performance concerns due to a larger bundle size and heavy computations, which could degrade the user experience. Additionally, it could pose security risks due to sensitive logic and data exposure and could lead to functional errors as some server-specific logic might not work as intended in a browser environment. To ensure that this function remains server-side only, we can use the server-only package. In the terminal, run npm install server-only. When we import server-only in a module, it ensures that the module causes a build time error if it is included in the client-side bundle. So at the top, import server only. Now, if a developer accidentally imports this module into a client-side component, like our client route here, you can see the build process will fail, alerting them to the mistake and preventing potential issues related to exposing server-only code to the client. You can see the error in the browser as well. In summary, maintaining a clear boundary between server-only and client-side code is crucial, especially when dealing with sensitive operations or data. Using the server-only package enforces this separation and helps maintain your application's security, performance, and reliability. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.